County 3 for 1 traffic. Hello, and thanks for joining us on UP Responds. I'm Jennifer Hales with UPTV. It will soon be time to commemorate our nation's great heritage. Many people celebrate the 4th of July with a barbecue and a fireworks celebration. As you begin planning your festivities, we'd like to help you understand the new 2019 University Place fireworks restrictions and give you some great prevention information so that you can make the 4th of July a safe holiday for you, your family, and your neighborhood. Today's show is designed to arm residents with good information so they can discharge legal fireworks safely or live among neighbors that choose to do so. Last year, University Place Police Chief Mike Blair visited a local fireworks stand to discuss fireworks which are legal this year. Let's check out what he learned. Hello, I'm Mike Blair, your police chief. In 2019, the fireworks ordinance in University Place changed. I'm here with Samar Stewart at his TNT fireworks stand to discuss what these changes are. Hello, Samar. How are you, sir? Very good. Thanks for having us down here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Can you tell us what changes went into effect in 2019? So effective 2019, there will be no more artillery shells. There will be no more Roman candles. Um, it will just be strictly novelties, which consist of our sparklers, it consists of our fountains, our cones, of those sorts. Okay, so the only things that are legal in 2019 and beyond are sparklers, cones and fountains, smokes and novelty, is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay, can you show us some examples of those? Yes, sir, okay. I'll be honored to. So here I am smart at one of your tables. Looks like we've got Morning Glory, which is kind of a sparkler. Yes, sir. And you have your traditional sparklers here too, is that correct? Yes, sir. And these are legal? These are be legal for 2019. Um, they don't go in there, they don't go in, you can hold them in your hand, spin them around, they make pretty little colors and they're very safe. Actually, they were um, one of our number one favorites for the kids. It looks like they range in size too. You have some small morning glories and some large morning glories. Yes, Same sir. with the sparklers. Yes, sir. Okay, so you have some examples of some smoke uh, novelties. Can you show me those? Well, I have our smoke grenade, which is just basically you just pull a cord and you just let it down and a regular white smoke comes out of it. Doesn't explode, it's pretty harmless. Okay, so no sparks or anything no like sparks, that? No sparks, no Just white smoke? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. This one here is our yellow ammo stick. So it comes in different colors. We have purple, yellow, green and what it does you light it and outside the top of the smoke just comes like a yellow flame like in a good old movie when you want to light a flare same thing okay and this just emits like a color smoke just color smoke okay. correct this one here is our smoke balls they come in different colors you light them and just different colors come out this so is, these don't blow up these they are just don't blow smoke. up at all just regular smoke here's one of our fountains as you can see right here the good thing that tnt did they loaded a uh, QR scanner uh, barcode, which shows you exactly what it does with the fountain. So that's all you're gonna get is the pretty colors out of the fountain. No explosions, nothing to go up in the air. It's pretty nice. And this is relatively quiet then? Correct. Okay. Well, thank you, Samar. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to show us the changes in the uh, fireworks ordinance in University Place. Indeed, an honor. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, that details what the changes are to the fireworks ordinance in University Place from 2019 and beyond. The only items of fireworks that are legal are smoke, sparklers, cones, and fountains. They are only allowed to be discharged on July 4th from 9 a.m. until midnight. Thank you. That was some great information. And to build more on some of our safety messaging for fireworks today with me is Scott Adams, who is a battalion chief with West Pierce Fire and Rescue. Thank you, Scott, for joining us today. Thank you. Um, I'd like you to maybe describe some of the injuries that come as a result of unsafe use of fireworks, if you could. So yeah, uh, some of the uh, issues that we typically will see are related to burns and respiratory issues. Um, some of the second and third degree burns that we might see can certainly be very catastrophic where they can leave uh, some scarring. But we'll also see injuries uh, related to bumps, cuts, bruises, mostly to hands, neck, and head area. Mm -hmm. We also might see uh, in extreme cases where there might be an amputated uh, finger uh, type situation or blindness or even potentially death. Oh goodness. Yeah. So is there a certain type of demographic that's usually injured or is there an age range or? So yeah, there really is. When you think about the statistics uh, that have been compiled over the years, uh, typically, uh, most of the injuries uh, happen to boys, and it's kind of a two-to-one ratio. 
and 25% of the overall injuries happen to children under age 15. Okay. So we always recommend a lot of supervision uh, for kids 15, age 16, where parents are letting their kids shoot off fireworks. Yeah, and I think it, it's really important to remind our viewers that you do need to be 16 years and older to, to be lighting fireworks off. So I think that's a really important piece, and particularly yes. with the injury information that you just shared. Yeah. So you've decided you're going to light fireworks off, and you've chosen the location. It's a good location. Um, what are some safety tips that you'd like people to remember when they're getting ready to light those off? And they're, of course, of age 16. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of information on that, more than what we could talk about here. But typically, uh, we'd like to see once you've figured out a great spot, we want to make sure that you've purchased uh, legal fireworks. You know the laws and regulations where you live. As far as where you're going to shoot them off, we typically like to make sure that you at least have an area that's 150 to 200 feet open area. We want to stay away from trees, power lines, uh, buildings uh, type of thing. If there's any tall grass, we recommend to cut that grass down. We also recommend a couple hours prior to discharging any fireworks uh, that we'd like you to wet down the area as much as you can, like the ground cover uh, or even the trees. And when you do set off your fireworks, uh, try to have a fire extinguisher, even a hose that will reach the area that where you're discharging. Um, also consider a couple of buckets of water, one that you can put discharged uh, fireworks or duds uh, right. into, and that extra bucket can just be for emergency type situations. Always keep kids away from fireworks, matches and lighters, as we, as we always tell them. Uh, to stay away from those areas and keep people or family away from where those fireworks are being discharged because injuries can happen to people that are just simply watching the show. Right, so. yeah, that's really good information. I'm yeah. sure you guys have a ton of information on your website, and I know we that do. that UP will also have information up for folks to, mm -hmm. to be able to become informed before they go uh, start partying uh, with the fireworks. So mm -hmm. is there a predominant type of firework that's involved in injuries that's more predominantly seen? Yes, um, fireworks and bottle rockets, of course, are illegal, but we do see those, and those do cause a lot of injuries. We also see with sparklers. And a lot of people will think, sparklers, how does that cause an injury? My kids play with those all the time. Not play with, but use sure. them. Those sparklers can burn 1,200 to 1,800 degrees, and if not handled properly, can cause burns. Mm -hmm. And in extreme situations, it can melt and even burn clothing. So we always tell kids in elementary schools, right. fire catches on your clothes, stop, drop, and yeah. roll. Right, so. and you know, kids are really, the judgment isn't there, and that's particularly important with the sparklers. They're not mm -hmm. gonna be thinking about all the things, the hazards that can happen. So right. it really is critical, that, that supervision piece. Great. So as a real safety measure, obviously we've covered some safety things if you're gonna light legal fireworks off in your neighborhood, of course, mm -hmm. but there are some organizations that provide public display. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your thoughts on that? So we always encourage, you know, folks, uh, the people uh, that live in different cities to simply go to city websites. Uh, they're a great uh, resource to learn what kind of happenings are happening during the summer months and what might be happening on the 4th of July. Also going to your local fire department because we'll typically have uh, information because we will inspect those display areas. Uh, before those people are able to shoot off fireworks. Mm -hmm. And also go to your Pierce County uh, Fire Marshal website too. They do have information if you live in areas not in University Place, Lakewood, or Stillicum. And so all that good information, learn as much as you can, try to get educated prior mm -hmm. to uh, the season coming up. And if it's dry out, be super, super careful. Yeah, so what yeah. you're telling me is there's no shortage of safety information. No. Yes, lots of it. people just need to take some time before they choose to light off only on the 4th of July between 9 a.m. and midnight in University Place. Be sure and be prepared and go to the, the website and check that stuff out. Yes. Thank you so much, Scott, for being with me today to talk about safety. After this quick break, we'll be back to talk with Chief Blair about UP's fireworks restrictions. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, 
a thorough stir, then another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. In 2017, the University Place City Council enacted new fireworks restrictions that further limit the type of fireworks that can be discharged in University Place. It will be important for residents to know that the original ordinance remains the same. It is only legal to discharge on the 4th of July from 9 a.m. to midnight, and you must be 16 years or older. To ensure residents are discharging permitted fireworks only, it is best to purchase fireworks in University Place. I'm here now with Mike Blair, Chief of Police for University Place Police Department. Thanks, Mike, for being here today. Can you talk a little bit about the new restrictions? Sure. Different types of fireworks have been um, banned from being uh, purchased and discharged in University Place. Those items that are sold at our stands are ones that are going to be legal in University Place. That will include smoke items such as smoke balls, uh, novelty items such as snakes and poppets, sparklers, uh, multiple different colors, and also cones and fountains. Cones and fountains will still emit sparks and also have uh, loud explosions as well with them. Okay, so that's good to know the new new restrictions are really based on the type of firework. Yes. Okay, so when can fireworks be discharged? Fireworks can only be discharged in University Place on the 4th of July between 9 a.m. and midnight. Okay, and that's the same as it has been. Yes. Uh, is there an age restriction on purchasing and discharging? Yes, you have to be at least 16 years of age or you have to have a legal guardian with you okay. if you're under 16. Okay, and obviously if you're going to purchase legal fireworks, you want to you seriously consider your location. Can you talk a little bit about where fireworks can be discharged legally and where you might recommend yeah, folks on, do that? On private property with the owner's permission. Um, our school facilities and our parks are prohibited from having fireworks being discharged in them. Okay. So one of the things I think is really critical for neighbors to do is really talk with neighbors with, you know, within their neighborhoods and their cul-de-sacs about what they can expect. There, you know, many people don't use fireworks at all or leave town and many, many folks do use fireworks. We know that South Sound 911 does have the largest call volume every year to 911 on the 4th of July. And that, that is in part because folks aren't aware of what is legal and they'll call because they don't like fireworks. And so I think it's really important for neighbors to talk to one another. And even if you don't plan to shoot fireworks off, to go to the website, to watch the show, and to become familiar with what is legal. And I think all that information on the city's website, uh, I know that there's going to be other information out there where people can really become educated and familiar with what a legal firework looks like in University Place so that they don't call 911 unnecessarily. Yeah, expect there to be fireworks this year. Um, yeah. We went out to a fireworks stand in University Place last year and I asked the owner to separate his stand um, into what would be legal and what wouldn't be. Two thirds of the items in his stand will be sold this year in University Place and are be, will be legal to be discharged. Okay. So speaking to your neighbors about expectations leading up to the 4th of July, uh, during the 4th of July, I think that's really important. It's something we talk all the time about is to, is to talk to your neighbors about public safety issues, and this is one of them. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So obviously, uh, the police department is staffed more heavily during the 4th of July. Can you talk a little bit about what your staffing plans are? Yeah, well, you know, we have a minimum staffing of at least two officers at any given time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on the 4th of July and days leading up to that's all we have. Uh, we will have um, some enhanced staffing this year um, on overtime. Uh, we will be um, uh, doing our best to enforce this, these re new restrictions, um, but that doesn't take into consideration all the other calls. Right. Uh, domestic violence calls, loud party calls, uh, you get a DUI collision, right. um, or you get other people in custody for other things, these calls can stack up. Right, and, and I think a lot of people may not realize that the 4th of July is an alcohol-infused holiday. There's a lot of people that are having parties and there's other issues that, that come about, law enforcement issues that come about, not just firework related during this time of yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly is a celebration. Um, and I've been doing this job for 24 years and I've seen things happen on the 4th of July that, it, that 
don't happen on other days. Right. Um, and that's an expectation that most police officers have working that is it's going to be a very, very busy day. Yeah, and I know that you have made it a part of your operation every year to go out on the 4th of July and be out with your guys and, and kind of checking on what's happening within the city, which yes. I think really says a lot. Um, if a person is illegally discharging fireworks and someone is notified via a dispatch, what can they expect from police? Um, they will have a call that will go onto the screen for a call for service and it'll be prioritized along with all the other calls for service that are happening. So again, we talked about domestic violence calls, shoplifting, collisions. Those are all calls that'll take precedence over a response to fireworks. Great. Well, I think we've given the viewers some really good information. I really appreciate you being here today, Chief. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching UP Response on UPTV. For more information about fireworks safety, check out cityofup.com. For a list of public displays, visit wsp.wa.gov. And remember, as long as you are at least 16 years of age and purchase fireworks in University Place and only discharge on the 4th of July between 9 a.m. and midnight, you are good to go. For UPTV, I'm Jennifer Hales. Have a safe and happy Independence Day.